Hello there, my name is Vasily and I'm doing PR and business development in TrueFlip and our new brand TrueLab. As you know, from the very beginning, we're trying to make our business not only successful and profitable, but a transparent one. We tried many different formats of how we report to our customers and our community. And therefore, today I'm sitting in our Moscow office together with my co-founder and colleague, Konstantin, who is going to answer the questions that we've been collecting for the last three months within our web survey. So, Kostya, can you please tell us what was happening with our company within the last quarter and what are the most critical updates? Well, first of all, before we begin, welcome everyone. And thank you so much, everyone, for putting your trust in us several years ago. And uh, thank you for still being with us after all this time. Uh, we truly appreciate every single token holder. And I sincerely hope that this level of transparency and the level of openness that we're trying to provide for you is something that gives you full comfort that you've put trust in the right team. So, as you know, my name is Konstantin, I'm the co-founder. I guess everyone knows me, I don't need any further introduction. It's been a long journey, this two and a half years ago, since our ICO. And it's been a very exciting journey. But still, my sense is that it's just the beginning. Now, speaking of the project, the Q&A, etc. So, this time around, we decided to give you something new. This interview, it's a free flow. Nothing has been prepared beforehand. It's just a conversation, so let's jump in to the first question. The important things that have happened in the past four months at TrueFlip. Well, there's been two milestone events that are very important for us. Number one, we've opened a brand new office in Kiev. It was very difficult to do because it's a new location and we knew very few people there. But we had a very strong sense that we need a strong marketing team in that location, because there's a concentration of amazing talents with the right expertise in the gambling industry. And we succeeded. It took us three months to assemble a team, and it's a very strong team of 12 professionals. Uh, as we speak, we have three affiliate managers in Kiev, one head of affiliate manager relationship, we have media buying team, we also have the support team there, the product owner who is in charge of various tools development, bonuses and feature development for the website, etc. So, uh, just to give an idea, it took me more than 60 interviews per person to assemble the team. You can imagine the amount of time it took to find these 60 people, do the interviews, select the best, then negotiate with each and every one of them and get them to work. You know, uh, some say, and it's a widespread opinion, that actually hiring people is a piece of cake. Well, maybe when you're hiring a nobody, yes, but when it comes down to professionals that do a great job, you're not the only one. You're competing with other companies. So, and most likely this, that person already has a job, right? So they're busy, so you need to find them give them the reason to come to your side. It's very challenging, so I've never trusted HR guys in this respect. So I believe that my experience in building the teams and finding people is very significant, so I can clearly see whether the person is the right match or not. Well, I've made some mistakes, but generally I'm pretty good at this. So, we've assembled a team, and that's just 50%. Well, the other 50% is actual onboarding, making sure that they can actually familiarize. And it's been a long journey, these two and a half years. As you know, there's been several iterations, there's been several pivots, we've changed the concept, we've changed the product, we've changed a lot of things. So, here comes this brand new team, and they don't know each other, they need to First of all, familiarize with each other, understand how to build the process. So, what is this place that they've been hired to do the work at? What is the product, etc.? So, we 
believe that we will finish this process by the beginning of September. It was too optimistic. It took us three more weeks. The team got fully assembled and started to operate as one unit only by the end of September. So, we now have an amazing office in Kiev. Everybody's happy. Seems like everything is going very well. And for the first month of work, the team has outperformed. The results are amazing. So, we've added a lot of new affiliates. The website traffic is up significantly. You can actually uh, check it out through similar app. You see a very strong surge for the month of October. If you look at deposits, you see the number of deposits and the value of deposits has also gone up. All that thanks to this new team. So how come we couldn't have done it earlier? Well, because we didn't have the product. So it's been a long journey, but when you look back, at least from my side, I understand that it could have never been done different. So I couldn't have done it a year ago, because we didn't have the games, we didn't have the gaming agent uh, engine, we didn't have uh, the bonuses, etc. So all these things are interconnected, so we wanted to fly into space, we had to build the rocket. The rocket is finished, it's fueled up, and it's on the launch pad. Now it's ready to go. That's the first big news. And the second big thing that is equally important to me is the new brand. As you know, we've come up with this name, True Lab. It's a game provider, game developer. And uh, we started with the game called the Chain Squad, just six digits, very simple game, just two people. Then we moved on to building a team of 15 people. We have mathematicians, illustrators, project managers, designers, front-end, back-end designers, the lawyer, etc. So it's a full-blown team. It's a very strong team that is delivering the actual product. Uh, so we decided to slow down a little bit. We thought originally that we'll be launching two games instead. We decided to focus on just one game, but it's a cool game. So at the end of November, in Malta, we're going to showcase the brand new game called Victoria Wild, and it's fully in line with all the latest and greatest trends. We've done it with just 15 people. Top companies do it with teams of 200, 300, etc. So it's an achievement in itself, and that's something that is very important. Yes, this is a step behind compared to True Flip, but this rocket is built and it's ready. It's being fueled up and it's also ready to go and start generating cash flow. And this is also a lot of work. So the new brand, new people, new processes, new expertise, etc. That's speaking strategically. These are the big ones. Now, speaking of the more sort of detailed things that includes, of course, the new web page, the new bonus engine, the new loyalty system, the new catalog, the top game providers like the Intracell, uh, Evolution, Play and Go, etc. Also, we are actually in the process of getting a B2C license in Malta. So the officials have sent out the book this thick uh, to, to meet the requirements and to get the Maltese license. It's a lot of work, I've never done it before, but we're currently doing the final stretch. We'll get the certificate of compliance and then we'll prepare all the documents required to obtain the license. And that's a brand new level of compliance. And this will open up new markets and new opportunities for us. I think that's a lot in just four months. Thank you for this detailed answer and this detailed update. And uh, let, me, let me ask you the next question. Uh, what are you going to do to improve the TFL token economics in 2019 and 2020? Well, that's probably the most challenging question for me personally. Well, because I feel very strong responsibility to all the people that are uh, watching us very closely and that put trust in us two and a half years ago. And I fully understand that um, many people are somewhat unhappy with the results. Yes, and I've talked to multiple token holders and they say, look, Constantine, we see that you're putting up a lot of work, 
and uh, we appreciate that. But the token price is going down, down, down. Seems like these two things are just completely disconnected. But one thing you need to understand is that since very inception, and I've said it m many times before, since day one, the token itself can never succeed, can never be sustainable, and cannot grow over time and become popular without the true fun foundation. And by foundation, I mean the actual business, the actual business model that works, the demand. So these are the only factors that can help. Factors like speculation, pump and dump schemes, creating artificial liquidity, creating artificial demand. These things can prop the price momentously, but then it's going to go down multiple times. Now we've seen it so many times before with uh, all these cryptocurrencies that are just bursting bubbles because there's no foundation similar to what happened to dot com so this past two and a half years we've been focusing on creating the foundation so the foundation is there so naturally i mean the way we see it there are several ways we can approach to creating a sustainable strong demand for the tfl token the first thing and we've already done it is the brand new TFL token holder page. And it's not just a regular page with just some numbers on it. It's a dashboard, similar to Google Analytics. And every single token holder can actually check out all the details, such as conversion, visits, deposits, withdrawals, uh, financials, uh, number of registrations, uh, traffic participation fees, etc., etc. I think this dashboard will be one of the best in the world for the projects of this type. That said, we do understand that there are token holders that don't need this extra information, they just don't want to know it. They only have one question. One is the lumber. So, for guys like this, I say, look, we're doing everything in our power. Yes, it's not going to happen tomorrow, but if we do the good work, it's going to happen eventually. So the lumber is coming up, it's behind the corner. But look, I will say that this is your risk and this is your choice. So, number one, a brand new TFL token holder fund page with a lot of metrics. And secondly, we are planning to announce a buyback. And we've been talking about it for quite some time. The reason we haven't yet done it, actually, is that you can't just announce it. You have to actually commit to it. And to commit to it and take it out of existing funds, it's almost like you buy it from your own self, from the left pocket and into the right pocket. You can only do it from the earnings once you start generating cash flow. As of now, we are making a negative 120, 140 thousand dollars per month. And we've mentioned this number several times during the previous Q&A sessions. But based on October statistics that you don't know, but I already have seen it, we're seeing major growth, again, because of the new team in Kyiv. And I want this growth to be clean and transparent. We want to get hard numbers and to understand how this works. And based on these numbers, then we can do the PL, then we can figure out this whole financial planning thing, and then we'll figure out whether we're going to channel 5% for the buyout, 10, 15, 20, or whatever. Or maybe send 10% to master flip, etc. And these are all very complicated questions, and these metrics are interconnected. You can't just use your gut feeling and pick up a random, random number, okay, 20%. It's not going to work. It's a business. And again, it's a business that we want to build. We want to build the transnational corporation. We want to build a strong market player. That's our ambition. And I take full responsibility for every word I say. So I'm being very cautious here in everything I do. So the buyback, the TFL token page, 
and thirdly, within the platform itself, there will be some exclusive features that are only available to the token holders. So therefore, we will create additional demand, create additional transparency, and uh, generate new demand, not only through new clients, but through the existing activity. So that's the plans. That's what we need to do. And there are no delays, but we do it very carefully, one thing at a time. Thank you, Kostya. Uh, next will be not a question, but more of an idea of one of our community members. Let me voice it over. So, what about converting for the next master flip the value of THF uh, funds in BTC amount into TFL bought on KuCoin at X dividend rate, master flip event, to pump the TFL price? Basically, pay master flip in TFL and not in BTC. Well, first of all, in order to call a commission generated by the master flip, okay, a dividend, you need to security token, you need to issue it, register it, and distribute it, and figure out the framework. We haven't done it yet. And I think uh, during the previous q and I already mentioned that to major token holders, and we have maybe three or four of those that have accumulated a lot of tokens, uh, they will be offered a security exchange. But the actual procedure will cost us maybe two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars, and it also takes time. So we're not ready to allocate time and money uh, for the sake of just a couple of people. So this is not a dividend; it's a commission, and this game, the master flip, that you all know. Now, as to your idea, I don't like this idea, and I believe that. This idea doesn't fit. And let me explain why. So if we start paying a commission in TFL tokens, then whoever gets the tokens can then sell and get the Bitcoins, if that's what you want. If instead we're paying at Bitcoins and you have faith in the TFL token, you can actually exchange it on the exchange and get the tokens. So nothing changes radically. So it comes down to your priorities. It comes down to what you want. Do you want the cash or do you want uh, to sit on this TFL tokens and see the company grow and benefit in the long run? This is two different strategies. So I believe that the way we distribute it now, I'm talking about commission, is 100% correct. It meets all our requirements. Okay, thank you. Another one, another idea. Uh, why not introduce loyalty dividend? 50% of token holder fund dividend go to those who park and hold TFL on the platform for the whole period between two master flip events. And the other 50% to anybody who parks at X dividend rate. Yes, I've seen this question and I thought about it for quite some time. And my viewpoint is that we should start by the profile of a token buyer and the motives. So some of them are speculators. They just trade it, hoping that it will go up or sell short believing that the value will go down over time. They don't care about everything else. Yet, some people actually believe in the team and the project, and they're ready to buy and hold this for quite some time. So I don't believe that we should prioritize one over the other. I believe that the terms and conditions should be equal. And generally, I'm quite happy with the way it is run right now. I don't think it will have a major impact. But the only thing that can have a really strong impact regarding the demand for the token is the actual performance, financial performance of the company. Everything else is just purely artificial thing that will collapse over time. And I truly believe it 100%. And here's an important thing. It's an idea of mine. I believe that we can try it sometime in the, in the future, once we get stronger and generate more money. 
Maybe we can run uh, this master flip game not once a quarter, but actually once a month. But for that, of course, you need all financial indicators to go up many times. So that's the only thing I have in my mind when it comes to look, the bonuses to the token holders, is to increase the frequency. On top of that, could you please introduce a buyback to burn program uh, to reduce liquidity? By example, you could keep 15% of GGR to token holder funds, and an extra 5% will be used to buy back TFL on exchange and burn them, like KuCoin and Binance are doing. Well, look, I think I've answered this question uh, in the beginning of this Q&A. And just to reiterate myself, yes, we want to do this, yes, we're planning to do this, and no, we don't know specific percentages, because to understand the percentages we need to understand the PNL, right? And for that we need several months. So once we have the PNL, then we will understand, okay, these are the costs, this is what we need to spend to maintain the company and grow it, the legal, the office rent, the salaries, the advertisement, etc. And this is how much money we're going to spend to the token holder fund, right, uh, the game fund, and that's what's left for the buyback. But we don't know the model yet, so we can only do the projection right now, and it's wrong. So we need to wait for the hard numbers. Once we get the hard numbers, then we can tell specifically, but uh, conceptually the idea is correct, and that's why companies like KuCoin and the Binance have done it multiple times. I believe that should be clear now. And let's move to the next question, which I believe has been voiced by Kosti as well. Uh, we need more transparency on token holder fund page. Why the result is updated once a month? and not in real time. Also, why did you announce the first B2B contact uh, more than three months ago, but Token Holder Fund is not getting any benefit from it yet? Well, I already mentioned that. So, the page for the Token Fund holders uh, is currently under construction, and there will be a brand new one. Why is it not in real time? Look, we started by just having one lottery. You buy one ticket, you do lottery, once a day was very simplistic, very simple metrics. Then we moved to five games, a bit more complicated, but still very simple. Right now we're talking about a tremendous amount of data. Every bet has multiple layers, the bonus fund, the affiliate commission, the game provider's commission, then the payments, everything is embedded. Uh, this person might win today and lose tomorrow, make the withdrawal or stay in the game. So we are talking about gigabytes of data. So no one can do it precisely in real-time mode. So this is not going to be real-time. So, and the solution that we're currently working on requires data storage. So this data needs to be stored so that all these requests don't interrupt the actual website. The point is that the website takes this data, pulls them into this data storage, and the data storage feeds it to the page and several other data mining tools. That's the way it works at a time. And again, this is very complicated, and we've been trying to crack it for quite some time, but it's not going to be real time. In best case scenario, this is going to be a delay of a day or two, maybe. But again, it's completely okay. And I don't really get the point when people want to see real time for the sake of real time. So it's about having a representative picture, not necessarily in real time. It's about what you analyze, not how you analyze it. You need a representative picture, so a lot of ins and outs, a lot of players. So then the dashboard makes sense. No one will want to see the dashboard that is empty. It makes no sense. But we make every, everything in our power to make it representative. Now, speaking of the B2B, that's a complicated business. And there are leaders like NetEnd, Igrasil, Microgaming, etc., etc. I can give you another top 10 names. And they have 200, 300, 400 games in their portfolio. 
is a big marketplace with strong reputation that they've built over the years. They have a lot of partners and the market knows them. So all you need to do is the book of debt, you just search it and play the game, that's it. So it's a very complex business. So we've been working on improving our expertise. We've been designing products. We've been talking to multiple partners to ensure integration. We've been selling during expos and shows. We've been trying very hard to take it off the ground. And in this past quarter, we've, you know, ended, uh, you know, the final touches you know, several major integrations, not the top ones, but relatively big ones. Besides that, there's also the regional big integration that we finalized recently. Now, the financials for now are very humble. We're the new one, so not well known. And we had the tournament and this integration gave us maybe a thousand dollars. So that said, well, TrueLab is the brand new development and it has a different idea and different financial model behind it. So the point is that we're going to actually uh, pay commission to the fund, to the token holder fund, only once TrueLab becomes self-sustaining when it becomes profitable. So we believe that we need six months to do it. We understand what kind of integration needs to be done. We understand that every new game improves our awareness, improves our popularity, and uh, of course improves the commission. So right now there's nothing to add. There's nothing. So TrueLab is a subsidized company at the moment. It's unprofitable and it has a certain track, similar to TrueFlip platform. And we started TrueFlip as a platform essentially uh, early October this year, but it took us two and a half years to build it. The same with TrueLab. I believe that TrueLab will take off during the Malta show and during the Sigma event uh, end of November with Victoria Wild. And I believe that uh, there will be some uh, integrations to follow up. But again, December is a very busy month, it's very difficult to deliver new integrations during this month. And an average integration takes about a year and a half if it's a big company, so sometimes down to 12 months, but still it's time. And these companies are sitting on a lot of can content, they don't need the new content, and uh, they're very skeptical about the new marketplace. So even if you're fully integrated, now if your game is ranked like on a 3000 place, nobody knows about it. So you need to make sure that the ranking is high, that the game stands out, you need to negotiate the terms and conditions so that they put it on top, uh, new promos, discounts, etc. That's a separate line of business. It is very complex work. Don't kid yourself thinking that you can do it in a month or a week. Another question. An obvious one, when can we expect to have audited records and know how much cash and crypto TrueFlip actually has? Well, that's the question that I receive every single time we do a Q&A. And of course, with every Q&A, the cushion gets thinner because we are spending and not making. Uh, you already know the number. We are talking about 120 to $150,000 per month. Sometimes uh, the numbers seems like a lot, but when you actually break it down, you understand that it's very lean. There's nothing to cut because an average salary in a company is less than $2,000, which is a very low number across the industry. So the currently currently employs about 60 people and everyone's multitasking because we do the platform, we do the games, we do the operational side. So everyone's multitasking. So uh, similar companies have 200, 300 people in staff. So we have a very lean team, small offices, the office size about 150,000 square meters of space, very low rent. So there's nothing to cut actually, there's no fat. A uh, significant cost for us is legal because it's a holding company. So, and every 
element of the holding company has a purpose. Company A is the payment, company B is the license holder, company C would be the IP and uh, the trademark, etc. And a lot of legal things we do in-house for the sake of saving the cost. But the Maltese license will cost a minimum of 100,000 euros. Of course, you break it down and you pay for installments, but look, you need to attend events and, uh, for instance, the Sigma event in Malta, and we're going to have a team of 11 people going there. And people from the sideline would say, well, why so many? Well, then the three people are the affiliates, right? They need to do the meetings, they're running around, and they need to do their part. Then the two people doing the meetings with the top managers of other companies, so we're seeking solutions uh, for the business development. They need to go as well. Then another four people will be for the booth and the stand to do Q&A, to consult and answer questions. So that's a total of 11 people buying tickets, booking hotels, transfer, you know, food, etc. So because it's a business trip. So all that's not cheap. So that's where the spending comes from. Seems like the amount is a lot, but for the company of our size, that's very cheap because we save every single penny. Now, coming back to the audited reports. So we are planning to make reporting more transparent for the token holders, but, and it's a very big but, this information should not be made public. Why? Because this competition and uh, there are market participants that have bad intentions, because, uh, well, that's why this should remain commercial property. And because we're not a fully public company, we didn't do the IPO, uh, we believe that a lot of what we possess should remain private. We don't want this kind of publicity. So the access will only be allowed to major token holders once they sign the NDA, of course, once they go through the KYC procedure. So that's a separate process because we don't want to do damage to this company by making it public. This is a very sensitive issue, so we don't want uh, certain types of information to be made public, like one of our competition might buy 100 TFL tokens and then figure out uh, what kind of salaries we pay and then offer 30% more and voila, you just lost your people or figure out what kind of commissions or we pay or charge, etc. So a lot of terms and conditions of our association with other companies are also under the NDA, protected by the NDA, so we cannot disclose this kind of data. So full-blown reporting will be only allowed to a very selected, limited group of people. That's the way I see it right now. In the future, of course, this might change, because we're going to grow, become international, and any way you slice it and dice it, we will require new partners to enter new markets, and especially strategic partners, and especially the market leaders, especially the ones with exclusive rights, and also the legal side of it, of course, we'll have to cooperate and we'll have to do, you know, deeper disclosure. That's going to come, but that's for the future, not for now. For now, uh, we are currently in the construction stage and it's just not the time. Now, as to the funds remaining, well, as I've said, and you probably know full well, again, nothing new here, any crypto asset is very volatile, up and down, up and down, and so it happens that when you want to exit, the price is always down. Well, that might be a little bit unfortunate, but uh, the rule is, and I've mentioned it several times, you need to have at least a liquidity cushion of six months to keep the company running six months. And we're talking about fiat currencies. We have this cushion. So, and that's sufficient. Based on my PNL, I can tell that this is a sufficient amount to become positive to become profitable, and also considering the advertisement budget, and because that, that's also very expensive. 
Because as you know, gambling market is very expensive and competitive. So once we're done, once everything's finished, we're planning to spend up to $100,000, maybe $150,000 per month on advertisement. That's a rating participation fees, that's a listing participation fees, some specialty placements, um, CPA model, etc. There's no free lunch. Uh, it all requires investment. And considering that we've raised, what, about six to seven million US dollars, depending on the medium exchange rate of the past three years, and the company has been in the market for two and a half years, and we've been operational, and we still have this liquidity cushion for the next 12 to 18 months, that means that we're very lean. So, uh, it's a big team, I think we're very lean. Well, I believe that's an honest answer. Uh, next question from one of our community members. He's writing, hi guys, token holder funds still sub-zero. Do you guys plan to share with token holders TFL that was used for playing before? What's happened with these tokens? Do you guys have any statistics how much tokens were lost for playing games? I think we've touched upon this issue several times at least, and we discussed it among the community members. Let me start by saying that a TruthLib company has not sold one token in the past two and a half years. 20% of the team token are still in that wallet. You can actually check it out by the scan. So we haven't moved it. So uh, I think we spent a total of 340,000 tokens, give or take 10,000. So we'll also give you detailed stats. And we're planning to distribute it. I've already said it several times in terms of the proportions. Uh, a certain percentage, and I don't remember the exact percentages on top of my mind, I think 20 to 30 percent, maybe 40 percent, I don't remember exactly. But this will be distributed among the token holders. So how come that we stopped doing this uh, for the past 12 months? For technically, so we haven't yet done it. We know how to distribute BDCs, but uh, not the ERC-20. Hopefully, of course, our team with the brand new token holder fund page will provide this kind of functionality, and then we will do it. So we didn't sell it, it's there, and we're planning to distribute it. And we have 340,000. The last one for today, quite emotional. What's the plan for early investors who are holding TFL tokens from start? I don't see any benefits of holding tokens anymore. Company created because of investors who has invested. Company must do something for them. Please. I feel your pain. And I myself have personally invested in TFL tokens. And as a token holder, I'm also dissatisfied. And I fully understand the question. Well, it doesn't really matter what's happening in the company, are they fat or lean, etc., etc. So, it all comes down to, are you getting the benefit as an investor? Well, like I've said, we've approached a milestone. And right now, we need to start thinking about the token holders. And this is very typical for a startup. You know, they call it the valley of death. It's when you had an idea, you've tested it multiple times, and then nothing happened. Well, uh, of course, the time span is different. Some of the projects like WeWork or Uber, they're still unprofitable. Yet, they've scaled it up, they're big, they're all over the world. Well, our story is different. We don't want to scale it up being unprofitable. We want to scale it up being profitable. We want to build the model that works, that makes money, that is profitable, and then scale it up. So, for the early investors and token holders, I think we will come up with some new system, some bonuses, something that gives them a little bit more overweight, compared to the ones that bought it yesterday, right? Some of the pioneers will have to be, of course, rewarded. So, by the way, so I'm completely open. If you guys 
have an idea about the new reward system or something like that for the early investors, please let me know. But uh, uh, some say that, look, just take the money that you've raised and just give it away. Like, yeah, convert your 50 bitcoins and just give it away. I think it's wrong. Well, we'll have less cash and therefore less chance to succeed. Uh, and it's almost like shooting yourself in the foot, just taking the gun and actually shooting yourself in the foot. So it's not going to work. Secondly, so you take the money, uh, like a hundred bucks, and then you return the 50. Say, well, that's a gift for you. So why would you take 100 in the first place? So it doesn't make any sense to me. So there could be some, you know, additional perks and benefits for the early investors. Maybe some of the TFL tokens that we spend on gaming, maybe an X percentage will be distributed among the early uh, users that have spent more than three years on the website. It's a good idea. And uh, just for your understanding, this is very important to me. I treat this project as my baby. I've spent so much time and effort to make it work. Two and a half years of continuous effort, no matter what. I have no idea how difficult it was. A lot of that remained private, like the hacking attacks or the multiple social engineering attacks. And we had multiple legal challenges. Yet we persevered in spite of all that. So I'm doing everything in my power to make it work, to make this project successful. That's, that's the, the best thing I can do for the early and for the late investors alike. That's, that's my idea. Thank you, Kostin. I think that's quite a massive update. That's quite inspiring. And I believe that we will keep doing something alike next year and uh, I believe that there is true flip next year and there is enough to do in 2020, enough of growth that we should pursue. So Kostya, let me ask you uh, one obvious question uh, which is probably left. Uh, tell us about the plans of true flip, of true lab and whatever we create. Well, I actually thoroughly enjoyed the interview. Turned out to be very complete. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. And please let me know if you like this format. Uh, should we do it again? Uh, speaking of plans, the 2020 plans. Again, there's only one plan. Just to grow, to grow and to grow again. And to improve all key financial indicators, the number of deposits, the number of users, the payments and all key stats and the average life cycle on the website, etc. So there's another big project uh, regarding the positioning of TrueFlip, because TrueFlip is now much more than just one lottery. So first we would like to evolve the main character, make it a bit more emotional and to gauge the audience better, uh, to have a better fit regarding different types of the audience. Then the next big stage is the new characters, new loyalty schemes. Then there's another one, working with affiliates. The purpose is to become the best casino, according to Ace Gamblers, uh, next year, or the best new casino of the year. So, and of course, this requires super support team, excellent payment, uh, working with aggregators. There's a lot of operational work to make it happen. Now, speaking of true flip, we're uh, looking forward to the license next year, early next year, so you never know, but early next year, so we'll get the B2B license soon. So hopefully we'll get it before the Sigma event. And that's it. Uh, to be the best casino in the world, lots of players and start generating cash and get the multi license. So that's without going into details. Now, speaking of True Lab, uh, for the True Lab, I just wish our new game would be well accepted by the market. I wish our True Lab becomes profitable to grow step by step and to turn positive and become financially independent. So, uh, again, we're expecting it to happen within the next six months. 
and to deliver better results, more market players, better integrations, better brand awareness, etc. So maybe new partnerships on the market could be that's yet another way to grow and skill up your business. And to also complete the brand new token holder fund page uh, to provide them the brand new dashboard and also to maybe structure our relationship with the token holder community in a better way to have better segregations based on who holds how many tokens to understand the goals of the audience and try to meet the goals and announce the buyback to have a more professional relationship with the investment community and i'm hoping i I can't promise it, but I'm hoping, because I have a candidate actually, who can actually become the head of IR. So uh, one of our token holders actually elected to become one. So hopefully, uh, if we succeed to negotiate, he will become in charge of structuring the relationship with our IR community. Sounds as a good plan, and I think nothing should stop us from achieving these goals throughout 2020. Therefore, I would just wish, uh, wish us good luck. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, everyone who watched this video. Thank you.